And again, thank you for continuing with the Certificate 4 in Project Management. The objectives from this presentation are for you to understand and apply knowledge relating to the identification of risk and the strategies around the management of them. The principle of risk tolerance, the coordination of the inputs to risk mitigation and the management of the outputs. The PMBOK 4 references chapter 11 starting on page 273. So we ask the question as to why we manage risk. And because risk is in the future, we need to plan for the uncertainty and the impacts that it may have on the particular project. The identification of risk and the management in the future also enables informed decisions regarding whether an organisation should proceed with a particular project. If the risk is identified to be too high, it may not be worth the organisation continuing. We also want to prepare for the risk, to prevent it if necessary, and provide for it if it can't be prevented. The types of things that an, a risk may impact are the actual outputs and deliverables from the project. It may affect the time frame or the ability to be able to complete the project within the required schedule. The risk may of course also affect costs or the financial management and outcomes of the project. Risk may also, of course, affect the availability of resources and the completion of the tasks allocated within the project. So it's everything. The project completion, the customer satisfaction, payments, it's the whole enchilada. Risks can affect a project being completed overall. Most organisations have some level of tolerance to risk. And that means the extent to which that organisation will accept risk in pursuit of something that they have specifically as an objective. It may be a financial objective or it might be a strategic objective. The more important that objective, the greater the tolerance may be. An organisation may choose to accept risk and manage risk in order to be able to achieve a required outcome. An example of this may be the strategic intent of entering a particular market within the organisation that's not currently covered. They may take over another organisation. The risks involved in taking that organisation might be substantially high. So therefore, the identification and management of risk will be very important. However, the overall objective of meeting that strategic goal may override the risk. In order to be able to evaluate tolerance to a project, the risks must be clear. We must therefore look at the inputs. How do you identify risks? Please look at PMBOK 4, 11.2.1, pages 284 to 285. All aspects of project planning and management should be considered during risk identification. So how do you go about identifying risk? Well, as with most things in project management, there is no specific science. The best source of information is from experience, which might be an experienced person or previous projects. Therefore, you ask questions. You ask questions verbally, in meetings, in writing, in reports, in questionnaires. Group input is critical. Opinions, experience, variations, interpretations of different individuals will all contribute to the identification and management of risk. Experience from those who have undertaken similar projects or have a background in the topic of the project is critical. And of course, projects that have been run with, within your organisation or within other organisations are an important source of archived information and lessons learned. Of course, in the finalisation stage of any project, the identification of lessons learned is really important and that will contribute to the ongoing future risk management of similar projects. So what evaluates a risk? In particular, it's the impact that this will have on the project if the risk occurs. This is combined with the probability of whether it is likely to occur or not. The impact versus the probability Every risk will have a combination of impact versus probability and every risk will be different and unique. Therefore we have a matrix and in this case we look at the risk impact 
if it occurs and turns into an issue, whether it's a very high impact down to a very low impact. On the converse, we have a very high probability down to low probability. When we evaluate a risk, we may say that this particular risk is very high in impact if it occurs. We may also identify that a particular risk would have medium probability. Therefore, together, this identifies that any, this particular risk we may be evaluating would be a high level risk or a level 4 risk. This evaluation should occur for every single risk that is identified in advance for a project and this becomes part of the risk management plan. Then of course the organisation determines how it will manage this particular risk. So what tools do you use in risk management? You undertake a risk management plan. This is a template. It will be filled in specifically for the project, but the organisation should have a template which standardises the considerations for risk within that organisation. You will be required to include an example of this template in your source area. A risk management plan includes a risk assessment matrix. It assists in the evaluation of every risk. It also includes a risk register and it determines how the risk must be managed. A particular risk in itself is that most organisations focus on the high category risks. Therefore risks of, of a lower categorisation of less impact and less import on the project may not have the appropriate attention. Many lower level risks can have the same impact as one high level risk. Be aware. The status of all risks is a significant topic in regular project management meetings, in all reports and in ongoing progress reviews with all stakeholders, both resources working within the project and the reporting to external resources. So the strategies of managing a risk may be that you avoid it. You undertake tasks to eliminate the cause of the risk. You may transfer the risk. For example, if the project is a construction project, you may have contractual conditions that manage the risk of bad weather. What occurs in those situations? Who is responsible? You also may take out insurance, which transfers the risk to enable a claim if a particular circumstance occurs. You also may choose to mitigate a risk, which is reducing the likelihood and or impact. If you cannot eliminate the cause, you might try and reduce the impact on the project by planning for it in advance. An organisation may also accept the risk. The identification of the risk in advance means that they can put whatever actions in place that are required to accept the risk and endure the outcome. These strategies are particularly identified on pages 303 to 304 in PMBOK. The outputs from a risk. Of course, there will always be new tasks added into the work breakdown structure and Gantt chart. It may introduce change requests. These will be covered in the communication subject. Decision records. Corrective actions all reporting, communications and project plan updates. And of course we have a risk register which will be updated on an ongoing basis as part of the project management strategy. In summary, identify the risk through combined input. Don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to ask from the more experienced. Ask questions, ask more questions, evaluate the risk, record the risk, and inform the appropriate stakeholders. Manage risk on an ongoing basis as part of the day-to-day -day project management. Don't identify risk at the beginning and then leave it. The assessment criteria for this subject is for you to have a risk management plan template in your source area. This must include a risk assessment matrix which evaluates impact versus probability or likelihood and you must have a management strategy for each risk. You must also complete this template so that you have a risk management plan in place for your chosen project.